second, the second part of this talk on the interlocutor test. If you haven't already, you might want to watch the first part of the presentation before watching this video. So the next study I looked at was published in the journal Science this year and looked at people with borderline personality disorder in comparison to a control group without. Now I won't go into too much detail about borderline personality, but it's a condition in which a person can have difficulties in their relationships with others. They can also have difficulties in regulating their emotions. In this study, people were put into pairs and played a game in which they gave and received money. There were two main findings. Firstly, the process of give and take was more likely to break down if one of the pair had borderline personality disorder. The second finding occurred when they looked into the brains of people playing the game. When people received a gift from the other person, the anterior insular cortex would fire in anticipation. Now when it came to people with borderline personality disorder, their brains didn't fire in anticipation. Instead, the right anterior insular's activity would dampen down. So we can say that people with borderline personality disorder have decreased activity in the anterior insular cortex when receiving gifts from their caring partners. The authors thought this was because people with borderline personality were more suspicious of their game partners. This leads on to assumption 3. The anterior insular cortex is activated when people are receiving gifts from others. And to simplify it, the anterior insular cortex is activated when other people are relating to the individual. And also, people with borderline personality disorder have difficulties with emotional regulation and have less activation in the anterior insula when receiving gifts from other people. A big step now. Decreased activity in the anterior insula leads to difficulties in emotions in people with borderline personality disorder. Now, I was listening to one of the science podcasts, one of the shows that has full benefits of the CD. One of the authors of the study, Lawrence Williams, was being interviewed. In his study, he found that if people felt something warm, they were more likely to give to others. And the reverse was true if they experienced cold temperatures. Williams discussed how the insular cortex might have been involved in bringing together emotions and sensations. When I listened to this, I put this together with the other pieces of information to come up with a model. So firstly, the assumption here, which isn't based on evidence at this point, is that the insular cortex integrates emotional and sensory information, although there is a lot of evidence out there um, if you look further. So here's the model. The model states that the intensity of emotions we experience is determined by processing that happens in the insula and that this is in turn determined by the availability of GABA A receptors and also by the sensory input the insula receives. So how can you contribute? Well, there's a number of ways. You can offer criticisms of the model. You can offer criticisms of the steps that I have taken to reach this model. You can offer alternative models involving the insular cortex, offer new assumptions that can be used in the model, or just identify parts of the presentation which aren't very clear. 
small second groups by leaving comments on the Amazing World of Synchronity blog or video responses or comments on YouTube or drop me an email to justinmarley17 at yahoo.co.uk marked insular or insular cortex and clarify if you want to be included on the list of contributors to the module. We already have one. Thanks very much for your time.